Hi everybody. For this station we're going to be reviewing measuring volume but actually specifically we're going to be taking a look at volume for irregularly shaped solids. So let's just remember the amount of space matter takes up is in fact volume and this little beaker here of liquid is going to be important. So some basic tenets of volume. Anything that is made of matter does in fact have volume. Um, it is the amount of space that an object takes up. Things with volume cannot share the same space at the same time. So what that really means is you can't have things in the same place as something else. And that's kind of a basic tenant. Um, can't overlap two things. When you measure the volume of a liquid in a cylinder, you should look at the meniscus. And we'll talk about what that meniscus is in just a moment. Liquids, uh, liquid volume is usually expressed in liters or milliliters, so that's pretty typical. Um, now, when we looked at volume of regular solids and the boxes or the cubes that you measured at your station, you were probably measuring things in cubic centimeters, but the nice thing is that one cubic centimeter is actually equal to one milliliter. So if you're curious about the volume of a liquid in milliliters, um, but you know that uh, length, width, and height of something was in cubic centimeters, you can easily convert between those two units. Now, Gases are a little bit different. When we think about gases, they really um, kind of fill up whatever container that they're in. Um, and so you can't really find the volume of a gas because it expands to fill that container. So when it comes to gases, we usually measure that um, in terms of pressure inside the container. And we might be taking a look at that later on in the year when we do our physics unit. Now, at this irregular volume station, the idea of liquids is going to become important because liquids are measured in um, liters. Uh, ounces would really be the English standard system, but remembering uh, in science that we look at the SI units or the, um, the international system of units. So we won't be using ounces, but we might be using milliliters or liters. Okay? Graduated cylinders are a good tool. Now, what you have on the board here is not a graduated cylinder that is a beaker. Don't get those two confused, okay? Now, when it, the reason those liquids are important, however, is because whenever you put something in a liquid, right, so if I had a glass of water, right, and I added an ice cube, the level of the water is going to rise. And guess what? The amount of space that the ice cube takes up is equal to the amount of space that the water rose. Now in this case we have to be careful this ice cube is all the way underneath the water. That doesn't normally happen but for the purposes of what we're trying to demonstrate demonstrate that is important. Okay. Now we talk about meniscus. We're kind of running through quickly here. Meniscus. Here's the spelling. And in a glass container, the meniscus is this curved line that the, that the um, liquid makes. And you always read the bottom of the curve. All right, so when you're reading the meniscus, the meniscus is the curve. You read the level at the bottom. Now, in this case, all right, we have... 20 milliliters, right? And that's for this graduated cylinder. But come on over here. In this graduated cylinder, we have a little black sphere. Now the level is 21, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the bottom of the meniscus. So originally it was 20 milliliters. It rose to 25 milliliters. The difference is five milliliters, that is the volume of the sphere, okay? So understanding that is called the water displacement method. That's important. You're going to want that for your sheet, okay, because you have to describe how you do that, but that's the water displacement method, and you'll need to know that for your measurement station, 
Okay, so now you should be able to have your SI units, you should be able to get your uh, notes filled in on your document, and that should be all set. Okay, all right, great, thanks.